I hated waking up in the morning. When my alarm would go off, I would feel such dread. I felt stuck like there was nothing I could do. Now your situation might be quite different from mine. Just know that you're not alone. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you how I changed my life around and how you can too. I don't know why I'm filming this because I think that the odds of me posting it are very low. Um, but I just like, I do love my job, but I feel like I cry too much. Like I feel like if you love your job, you shouldn't be thinking about quitting every day. When I get to work, I set a timer. I set an alarm till at my finish time and the alarm goes off as you did it. So that when I'm having a bad day, I can look at the time and I can see how long I've got left and like and I get encouraged as it as the time I have left goes down and I'm basically just wishing my time away which is wishing your life away I don't want to feel this way I don't want to have to tolerate each day this is not my best life and I know that life isn't always some jolly I know that I'm aware of that but this is not what I want to do and I know it's not that deep, I know that it's no big deal. And people keep saying, it's only temporary, it's only temporary. And I'm like, life is only temporary. This whole thing is only temporary, so why? I just, that's not me being weak or not hardworking. I am a very hardworking person. So this, like sitting in my car crying, saying, I don't want to do this, this is not who I am. This is not the best of me. I am a really diligent, hardworking person. It's just so hard. I'm gonna go home. I'm gonna go home. I had just finished a 13 hour shift. I was trying to vlog for you guys actually. <laughs> to tell you about my new job and my new life in London, but it didn't go to plan. And actually, if you scroll back through the videos on this channel, you'll notice that there's quite a big gap around that time in my life because I just couldn't do it. I was so deeply disappointed with where I was in life. I remember one time getting home from work and I was living with my sister and brother-in-law at the time and I had a complete breakdown or meltdown it's probably to this day the most vulnerable I've ever been with anyone to be honest um I was just like I'm so unhappy I am so disappointed with where I am in life and yeah I basically just said I didn't think my life would be like this and I'm really disappointed I had so many goals so many things I wanted to achieve I'm getting like emotional just remembering it I think there are times in life where you actually, you say things that you've been too scared to say and that was one of those moments for me. I was really disappointed with how I turned out, which is just a horrible thing <laughs> to say to and about anyone, let alone yourself. Fast forward to me now. <laughs> I am a medical doctor and a working actress. I'm writing my own play. I'm surrounded with friends that I love and I'm so deeply grateful for. And I am happy and fulfilled. I'm still along the journey. I'm not saying everything's perfect, but I made huge changes in my life in order to go from a depressed doctor to a happy doctor. Huge mindset shifts that I made that I think you can make too. So if you are at a point in your life where you're like, I'm not pleased about the trajectory, I'm not happy where I am, I want to change my life, I want to be happy and fulfilled, then first of all, I'm sending you lots of love, I empathize. Second of all, there is hope. You are here, you are breathing on this planet for a reason. God has given you life and he's put that life into your hands for you to take the steering wheel of your life and actually drive it, drive the car that is your life. Hi, if you're new here, my name is Sarah. I am a medical doctor and YouTuber and in this video, 
I'm going to share with you the steps that I took to massively improve my life. Step number one, stop acting like you've lived before. It is your first time doing life. No matter how old you are, it is your first time being this exact same age. Matter of fact, it is all of our first times. Everyone is just figuring it out. The person who gives you advice, they are doing this for the first time time. Everyone who's ever lived, they were just having a go. They were making it up as they were going along. I say that to say, give yourself some grace. It's your first time. If you've lived life and you've gotten to a point where you're like, this is the absolute worst. What have I done with my life? It was literally your first go being here. <laughs> like, give yourself a break. You tried. You had certain circumstances and okay, maybe some of them weren't the best, but like, okay, what are you going to do? It was your first go. Give yourself some grace. Let that go. You don't have to be mad at yourself. It's happened. It's in the past. It was your first time. The best thing that you can do now is learn and grow. That is one of the wonderful things about being a human. We can learn and grow. We can change. We're not stuck where we were before. There is still opportunity for growth. There are so many incredibly successful people who talk about the lowest of lows and they hit rock bottom. Stories of multi-millionaires who had to file for bankruptcy. Stories of successful actors who used to be homeless. Rock bottom is a great place to bounce back up from. So if you have hit rock bottom, if you are hating your life right now, just know that you're in great company. Many people before you have also hit rock bottom and they have picked themselves up and changed their life around. You can do that too. Another reason why I want you to stop acting like you've lived life before is not just so that you can give yourself more grace, it's so that you can let go of this notion of what you are supposed to do. In the clip I showed you previously, I took a job that was full-time on A&E in the NHS because I believed that was what I was supposed to do. Now I knew that that wasn't really what I wanted to do. I had other passions and desires, but I pushed them deep down. You'll actually see in a previous video of mine when I was talking about potentially going to acting school, but I was like, that would be ridiculous. What do you mean? I can't do that. I literally pushed down my desires and did what I believed I was supposed to do. But supposed to do based on what? Based on who? If I truly am one of a kind, I'm the first Sarah Otung in this day and age, my body, with my genetics, with everything that I am and have, then who on earth is saying what I'm supposed to be doing? It is genuinely insane the things that we do to force ourselves to fit into a mold that wasn't made for us. So many of us are trying to force ourselves to have a perfect career when that career was designed for a married middle-aged Caucasian man in the 50s who had had a wife cooking and cleaning for him at home. It's 2023 now, if that doesn't work for you, I'm not surprised. The only way to find out if something works is to try it. Let go of all these notions of what you're supposed to do. Oh, I'm supposed to get married at this time. I'm supposed to have this many kids. I'm supposed to complete this career. Who says you have to get to the top of any career or complete anything? Who says that? What is this based on? You are the one. God has given you power in your life to make decisions, literally. Like, it's in your hands. You have the paintbrush. This blank canvas of your life, it is yours to create. What we tend to do is take our blank canvas of our life, we draw a little, we doubt ourselves, and so we turn to the person next to us and they're like, what am I supposed to draw? And they say, well, this person drew that and that person drew that, so yours should really look more like this and that. What? If God had wanted to see the exact same picture that someone else drew, he would have given them our brush, but he didn't. He gave it to us. We can create our lives and design them the best way that we know how. So let go of any notion of who you are supposed to be, what you're supposed to do, and realize it's up to you. The first time you deep that, literally every single other person who has lived before, it was also their first time, and they were also making it up. No matter how old someone is, they cannot know the best thing for you because they've never been you. They've literally never walked in your shoes. Now they might have wisdom based on their experiences, don't get me wrong. I'm all for learning from people that we want to be more like. But at the end of the day, the decision is in your hands because there's never been another you. There never will be another you. Let that knowledge excite you and empower you. You are so powerful. The potential is all there. The fact that you are here right now listening to this is not a coincidence. And I'm so grateful to be even a tiny part of your journey because your story is going to be incredible. I really feel that in my spirit right now. Someone watching this, your journey is going to be absolutely incredible and I feel honored <laughs> that you've clicked on this video and yeah I'm really excited for you I don't know who that's for but 
I feel a word. Step two, you can't pour from an empty cup. If you've ever been on an airplane, you will know when they do the safety instructions, they always remind people to put their own oxygen mask on first before helping someone else. The reason for this is because you can't help someone else if you are not sufficiently provided for. In order to be a blessing in this life, to love others, to share love with others, we need to be okay first. We need to be alive and breathing. So there will be times in life where you can have this discomfort with the fact that you need to put yourself first a little bit. I felt this hugely when I was working full-time on a and &E. I wanted to help this understaffed environment, but the environment in itself broke me down to the point where I was showing up as a shell of myself. I could not do it anymore. I had nothing left to give, <laughs> essentially. So when you are thinking about changing your life, sometimes it can feel a little bit like, oh wait, what do you mean I have to take this time to focus on myself? What about the other people in my life who need me? My friends, my family, my children. Don't get me wrong, I'm not telling you to neglect your responsibilities, but just know that it is part of your responsibility to look after yourself, because if you don't, there is no chance that you will be able to help anyone else in any way. The more whole and fulfilled that you are, the better you can show up for other people. So taking this time to work on yourself and invest in yourself and think about what you actually want from life and make decisions that benefit you, you will be directly and indirectly benefiting those that you love. So put your own oxygen mask on first, look after yourself, pour into yourself. As you pour into yourself, you are pouring into them. It's kind of like a chain reaction. You pour into you and you have more to pour into them and it can trickle on. But if your cup is empty, you're actually just gonna tip the scales and require them to pour into you more. So if you want to live this life as a person who is blessed to be a blessing, that's what I like to say about myself. I always say, I am blessed to be a blessing. So as I am praying for blessings, as I'm calling blessings into my life, those blessings can throw me into other people. The more that I have, the more that I have to give. And I'm so grateful to God that I get the opportunity to bless others and to be a channel through which God's love can pour from me to other people. There's a verse in the Bible which says that we should love others as we love our ourselves. Ask yourself if the way you love yourself is good enough for another person. You know, would you be happy treating a loved one the way that you treat yourself? If the answer is no, then it's time to change that. It's time to take the time for you. The same ways you make time for other people, make time for you to sit down with yourself and plan your life and invest into your life. You need to do that. That's not selfish. It is actually the best way to look out for others. You can't pour from an empty cup, so take the time to fill it up. My third tip is to follow your peace. Now, I'm a Christian, so I'm always gonna quote scripture, but I also think that there's just wisdom in these quotes. There's a verse in the Bible which says, let the peace of God rule in your heart. And I love that. Some people think of it as intuition, but when I tell you, when I have peace with something, when I am at peace with a certain decision, it's always the best decision. There have been times in my life when I've gone against the peace of God in my heart and things have gone so wrong and I'm like why did I do that I knew I knew something was telling me God was telling me that this was what I should be doing but I looked at the logic and I looked at the common sense and I went for this other thing even though I didn't feel peace with it please 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 learn to follow the peace that is in your heart when you're considering different decisions it might be that logically I should take that job because logically I will have stability we're on a rock floating through space what do you mean stability Anyway, stability can be such a myth that causes us to sell ourselves short. Ugh, hugely causes us to sell ourselves short, but that's a whole nother video for a whole nother day. If you're thinking, oh, technically I should take this job because it's more stable and I should do this, but you're feeling led to do something else, I will always tell you to follow your intuition, follow that, that knowing, follow your peace. Don't doubt. I, I truly believe that the science just hasn't caught up with what our bodies can tell us in terms of what we sense sometimes. Sometimes you might be in a situation and for some reason you just feel a little bit uncomfortable and you can't quite put your finger on it. You just know something is quite right. That intuition, I honestly believe like 20 years from now, we will be able to see the cascade of <laughs> proteins in the body and energy and whatever it is that causes that. I made so many decisions based on what I was supposed to do. I was putting other people first while neglecting myself and I was ignoring the peace in my heart and the intuition that I had. A huge change for me was when I started following the peace in my heart and really leaning in to where I felt God was leading me. Things like what flat I should move into, whether or not I should go to waxing school, how I should make it work. I was really just following 
following my peace and following my intuition. Always follow your peace. Tip number four is to do what you love. Please, please, please do what you love. I know this sounds so cliche. You might think, oh, everyone loves what I love, but that's not true. Your love, your passion, what drives you is unique. It's rare and it has value. There are people out there who love football. I don't love football. You'd have to pay me a lot of money a lot of money to train football full time. So just know that your love or what you love is unique. It is a gifting and it is a calling and you can bless people with that. Stop belittling the passions that are in your heart because that passion is like priceless. It is worth so much. I'm so glad that there are people out there who are passionate about engineering so I can live in this flat. It means that I get to benefit from it. When you do what you love, you will excel in it. You will excel in it just by your enjoyment of it, the fact that you want to do more of it. What you love is valuable. It is precious. So do it. Do it in your spare time. Do it full time. Do it all of the time because you are bringing value to others by doing what you love. When I wanted to do acting, I had an audition for acting school. This audition was three hours long. And when I tell you, I loved it. I loved it. And I didn't even realize that was weird until I was telling a family member how much I loved the audition. They were like, oh, but they were expecting me to say, oh, it was three hours. It was so, so long and boring. But I was like, that could have been six hours. I had so much fun. I learned so much. I felt such peace. I felt so passionate. I was like, I want to learn and develop this craft. You might be sitting here thinking, Sarah, but I don't know what I love. I have no idea what I want to do. How exciting is what I say to that. It means that you haven't found it yet. So keep trying new things. Try literally everything, like make a list. In fact, I'll make a list for you right now of stuff you can try. Interior design, playing tennis, driving a bus, working in construction, gardening, being a cleaner. There you are. There's seven things that you can go and try right now to see if you love them. Try them all. How exciting. It means that you just need to keep trying new things until you do find something that you love. So yeah, if you're watching this, you're like, but I don't have a passion. I don't know. Well, go find out. That is so exciting. To me, all that says is potential. Potential to fall in love. Ah. Oh, what a romantic story. So find what you love, keep trying new things and do it. Just do it, just find a way. For me, when I was working full time in A&E and then I found acting and I loved it, I made that work. I swapped an insane amount of shifts. If you ask anyone who's ever worked full time on A&E, so that's when you're doing night shifts, it's 24 seven cover, right? 13 hour shifts, long days. I somehow managed to have every Monday evening and Saturday morning off work to be able to attend my regular acting classes for 12 weeks. Do you know how impossible that is? I have this saying that I say, everything is figure outable. There is a way for you to do what you love. Stop limiting yourself. Everything is figure outable. I swapped those shifts, I prayed, I messaged people, I did favors. I had found something that I loved and I wasn't about to sit back and let it just pass me by as a moment in time so that when I'm 70 in my rocking chair, I could say, oh, I thought I might have loved acting. No, I love it now and I'm gonna do it now. I'm gonna seize that moment. Sometimes I think that we can wait for the perfect time. For example, I remember when I got accepted into acting school and I was like do I do it now or do I defer it by a year and I was like mm -mm -mm, we cannot defer when the iron is hot when you feel that in your soul do it now do it now don't delay it because who knows what would be happening a year from now when you know stop making decisions out of fear make them out of love and passion that's something I try to live by stop making decisions that are fear-based make decisions that are love-based passion-based there will always be fear especially when you're pushing yourself and changing your life because we're made to seek comfort, right? We like to be comfortable, but it requires discomfort to change your life. Change is uncomfortable. So stop making decisions out of fear, make decisions out of love, do what you love, find a way to do what you love. If you love gardening and you have no garden, make some leaflets, go knock on an incredible house with an incredible garden and ask them, hey, can I garden for free? I would love to look after your garden. I'll do it free of charge. Find a way to do what you love. There is a way and you are powerful. Don't you dare. Stop thinking that. Stop thinking, oh, I can't. Yes, you can. Don't you dare disrespect yourself by saying that you can't. Please don't. You can. I know that you can. So figure out a way to do what you love and do it consistently. And I got a little, got a little energetic there because I mean it. I can't stand it when people say, oh, I can't do that. I'm like, you're really disrespecting yourself when you say that. You are literally here. You are capable. You can do anything that you put your mind to. So stop saying you can't. You absolutely can. And I won't have it. I won't have you disrespect yourself. Not on my channel. Go to someone else's channel to disrespect yourself. But you're not going to do it here. Not in my house.
I have so much more to say on this topic, so if you want a part two, let me know. But my fifth tip is to assume the best. Always assume the best. I want you to go through life assuming the best of everything and everyone in every situation. So often we can go into situations with a negative, paranoid, pessimistic, narrative mindset and attitude that causes us to then shape those situations to make them negative and unsuccessful. When something bad happens, I want you to rewrite the story of what happened as a good thing. So for example, imagine you're on your way to a job interview, but then you get a flat tire, your car breaks down, it takes hours to sort it out, so you actually miss the job interview and they refuse to reschedule. You can either sit in that thinking, oh, this is the worst situation ever, I've missed out on this job that was meant to be. Or you can assume the best and say, oh my goodness, thank God that I was just prevented from showing up for a job interview that wasn't for me. Because it clearly wasn't for me because it's not gonna happen. I'm really glad that now I'm gonna be free to continue looking for jobs and find the job that was even better for me. Use the power within you. Use your mindset to believe the best, assume the best. Go into situations assuming that they will work out. Choose to believe that everything in your life is working out for your good. Not only will that energy and belief draw good situations towards you, but it will empower you to make the most out of every single situation. Working in that stressful, toxic a &E environment that I did was horrible, but actually I learned so, so much from it. The situations in your life, you will learn so much from them and you will be stronger and a better person because of them. So believe that now, don't wait till afterwards. You can believe that now, you can say, okay, this is difficult now, but I know, I know that within this difficulty, things are working out for my good. One thing I love to say to myself every morning is that something great is going to happen today. Something incredible is going to happen today. I have that belief every single morning. I know that today is going to be an incredible day. By choosing to have that belief, you not only draw things towards you with that positive energy, but you open your eyes to see opportunities for something great to happen. This belief will be a catalyst for you to be able to make the changes that you want to see in your life. I could honestly talk about this forever, but I'm gonna end the video there. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really appreciate you supporting this channel. Please feel free to support the channel by becoming a member. I'll be doing polls about what videos you'd like to see next for members to vote on. Join my free home workout plan link in the description of this video thank you so much for watching you guys i love you so much and i will see you soon bye <laughs> all right i'm quitting my job tomorrow i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it oh i'm so excited i am so excited to tell them i'm quitting Lord help me, what am I going to do for money? Lord God, please give me money, I pray in Jesus' name, amen.